The following is meant to be a step-by-step -step guide to question number two on the advanced specific heat capacity questions that were given in class today. Several people had stopped in or had emailed um, questions about how to set this one up, so I'm going to just go over this one for you. All right, a pure gold ring and a pure silver ring have a total mass of 17 grams. The two rings are heated to a temperature of 65.4 degrees Celsius and dropped into a 12.4 milliliter of water at 22.3 degrees Celsius. When equilibrium is reached, the temperature of water is 24.7 degrees Celsius. What is the mass of the gold ring? The specific heat capacity of gold is 0.129 joules per gram degree Celsius and of silver is 0.237 joules per gram degree Celsius. It's a lot of information to kind of figure out. And so as we had talked about in class, the best thing to do is to write down what you know. First of all, we know that the energy lost um, by the metals in this system is going to be equal to the energy gained by the water. Before we can set that up, we need to be thinking about what are the masses, specific heat capacities, and temperature changes for each metal and um, the water. So let's take a look at what we know. It says a pure gold ring and a pure silver ring have a total mass of 17 grams. And it's asking me for the mass of the gold ring. I'm going to assign the gold ring a mass of x. I know that I'm going to be dealing with the variables in this example and that um, this time we're looking for mass, so mass is going to be my x. The specific heat capacity of gold is 0.129 joules per grams degrees Celsius. And the temperature change, um, they start at 65.4 degrees and the equilibrium temperature ends up being 24.7 degrees Celsius. Looking at my silver, um, again, we don't know the mass of silver. It's not asking us for it, but we're still going to need to think about that in terms of the mass of gold compared to the mass of silver so that we can solve this total problem. So gold plus silver had a total mass of 17 grams. So if the mass of gold is x, then we know that the mass of silver is 17.0 minus x. The specific heat capacity of silver is 0.237 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the temperature change would be the same. Um, so 65.4 minus 24.7. All right, then looking at the water, again, we're going to look at those exact same variables. The mass of water is not directly given to us. They do, however, tell us that we have 12.4 milliliters of water at 22.3 degrees Celsius. For the purpose of this problem, we're going to assume that the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. How that's going to help us is if we have 12.4 milliliters, we would know that if we put that on a balance, it should have a mass of 12.4 grams. So the mass of water would be 12.4 grams. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per grams degrees Celsius. And then the temperature change would be 24.7 minus 22.3. Now that we have all of this information, we can take those variables and plug it into our equation. Okay, we started off by saying that the energy lost in the system had to be equal to the energy gained in the system as long as the system is in a closed environment, which we are assuming this is. So we know that the gold is heated up to a temperature of 65.4 degrees Celsius and will lose energy. So we're going to put that on the left side of our equation. We also know that the silver is also heated up and then loses energy to the water once it's placed in the water. So it will also be on the left side of the equation and we're going to add that information together. That's going to be equal to the energy gained by the water. So this is essentially how we want to set this up. 
We're now going to go and plug in the MC delta T for gold, the MC and delta T for silver, the MC and delta T for water, and then we are going to solve it to find X, um, which will be the mass of our gold. All right, plugging my values in for MC delta T for gold gives me the following equation. I'm going to add that to the information for silver. Then that got a little bit more complicated because that's 17 minus x. And that should equal the information that I have for water. And the water is really nice because it's going to end up being a number. All right, so if I simplify x times 0.129 times 40.7, it should get 5.2503x. I'm not going to simplify those numbers um, until the very end when I will round according to sig figs. Um, again, if I go with 17 minus x times 0.237 times 40.7, that should simplify into 163.98 minus 9.6459x. And the last thing that I did was I multiplied 12.4 times 4.184 times 2.4, and that gave me 124.5158. And so the next step is to simplify the left side. So I'm going to add those x's together and then subtract out that 163.98 from the 124.5158. All right, subtracting the x's gives me negative 4.3956x, and then subtracting the 163.98 from both sides gives me negative 39.4642. To solve for x, I would divide both sides by the negative 4.3956. When I do that, I get that x has a value of 8.97811. I'm almost there. so. That should be a value of the mass of gold in grams. And I want to go back and figure out how many significant digits I need in my answer. So looking above, I have 17.0 grams up here. That would have three sig figs, 12.4 milliliters, three sig figs. Um, each of my specific heat capacities has three sig figs. And so my final answer should have three significant digits. So my mass of gold so gold mass should equal 8.98 grams. I could always double check that answer by actually plugging that back into the original equation. So plugging that back into here and then doing 17 minus X, plugging that back into here and calculating that. Those two numbers added together should give me really close to 124.5158. And if it does, I can have confidence in my answer. At this point, the video is already over eight minutes long, so I'm going to end there. Um, please come to class with your questions on any of the other specific heat problems. These ones got pretty tough pretty quickly, so I do expect that there will be some follow-up questions in class.